Hi everybody, I am Jillian Harris. This is episode three of Ask Jilly Anything. I am spilling all things Bachelor and Bachelor related. I was on season 13 of The Bachelor, that was Jason's season, and then I was season five of The Bachelorette. And if you wait till the very end, I'm gonna spill the secrets and the scoop on what happens in the fantasy suite. The Bachelor, well, first of all, The Bachelor, it's a TV show, it's a, it's a business. There are dozens of producers and executive producers and psychologists and people that are trying to figure out how to get people to crack. There's a lot of inner workings. Like, first of all, you're completely sequestered right from the very beginning. From the very first day, they put you in a hotel room for three days, maybe it's two, felt like three, and they sequester you. They take away your phone, they take away the TV, they take away everything. They give you like $20 a day for room service. You can't go out for lunch, you can't go, you only can order room service. And you sit there and you think. And about every three or four hours, a producer comes to your room and they start to um, shape and form your feelings already. Oh, I talked to Jason. You seem exactly like the kind of girl he's looking for. I told him about you. He's so excited to meet you. So they make everybody feel super, super special. So by the time night one comes, you're losing your mind because you've been stuck in this hotel room for two days in a city you probably haven't been to before because you're in LA. And all this anticipation of what am I gonna wear? What is everybody else wearing? What are the girls are gonna be there? I'm so nervous. What is the limo ride gonna be like? And you get there and you literally feel like you're meeting your husband on that first day. So you don't know how to navigate. Like I remember everybody telling me, just be yourself just be yourself, but when you are in a situation that you've never been in before, you don't know what yourself is. They even like you to have a diary, really, because they want every emotion and every feeling and every thought to be on camera. Producers ask you to keep a certain person when, before the rose ceremony. You get to choose who you can pick to stay, but you can't always pick who you wanna go. And I remember them sitting down with me, like, who are you thinking about getting rid of this week? And I'm like, I need to get rid of David. She's like, unfortunately, you can't get rid of David this week. And I'm like, why? I have to. She's like, I'm sorry, you just can't. You gotta keep those people for ratings. They're the exciting people. It's up when the girls are leaving and they're crying. So yeah. no doubt they're emotional. So are you up all night? Yeah, so the cocktail party takes like five or six hours and you're pretty much drinking throughout the entire thing unless you're really, really smart and you're not drinking. I was not one of those people. <laughs> but they can't start the evening until it's dark, right? Right. So let's say it gets dark at like nine or 10 at night, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, then three, four, five, it's five o'clock in the morning. That's when the rose ceremony is ending. On the first night, you get to sleep in all day, the entire day. So I woke up at like noon the next day and I was like, like this, like my eyes. And then I was like, oh my God, there's a rose on my bed. And I was like, oh, I got a rose last night. Like I was pretty oh. drunk. Like I don't even really remember getting the rose. <laughs> when things ended with Ed, did you ever, or at least consider contacting any of the runners up to go for a date or to reconnect? Everybody wants to know, Ed truly did cheat on me. Remember when all the scandals and we were on the front cover of Us Weekly? When I broke up with Ed, I was actually devastated. Like I truly thought that he was the one, but he just was not an honest guy. I so badly wanted him to change for me that I was so obsessed with him. I wasn't really wanting to rebound. All I wanted was for him to like fall in love with me again. I was so sick, I was so depressed and skinny. I was so skinny and, and I was reading all these horrible things about like how ugly I was and how annoying my voice was and um, how ugly my nose was. And the only, I can't change, I can't change my voice. There's certain things you can't change. But I was like, I'm gonna get my nose done and shut those fuckers up, <laughs> right? Like, so I did, I got my nose done. And I remember I was at my mom and dad's house for like a week recuperating. And I'm like, all I want is for Ed to see the new me and fall in love with me again. This is so sad. This is not right, ladies, if you're watching this. I was not, I was not thinking probably, but this is what love does to you. Like you just go crazy. It was like the day I took my bandages off and I went upstairs, my phone was plugged in and I had noticed that Ed called and my heart just stopped. And I called him back. Like, I feel like I made a big mistake. At least he said that that's all I ever wanted to hear. And I just, didn't care. I did after that think about Reed quite a bit. I felt like that was the one person I didn't get real closure with. Like Kipton and I were just like not the same kind of people, but Reed and I had a lot of fun together. So I'm happy that I got my, my guy. He's better than all those guys. So what actually happens in the fantasy suite? Everybody's fantasy suite experiences are different. 
I do feel like a sexual connection is really important. Some people don't have sex. Some people just stay awake and talk all night. But I, at that point, I was truly in it. I really thought one of these final three were gonna be my guy. And I wanted to know what that was gonna be like. I truly loved my final three guys. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with having sex with three guys, but normally, that happens over the course of like a year, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was happening over the course of a week. And I just was like, okay, I made this decision to be here. This is what I'm gonna do. I, I have this one opportunity to figure out these three guys and yeah, just go for it. I hope you guys enjoyed episode three. Don't forget to subscribe and share my page with everyone. And thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. <laughs> and see you on the next vlog. And see you on the next vlog. <laughs>